We are live. <laughs> well, first and foremost, uh, Dr. Clay, I would like to say uh, appreciate you for taking the time to come on to the Grooming Den show. And um, this, as I share with you via email, the object our objective is to bring more awareness around um, the health and as it pertains to our skin, our hair, our beard. And I wanted to bring experts like yourself to be able to share, uh, you know, your expertise to be able to, to share some insight on how to overcome some of these issues that that is really just not improving our quality of life. And at the end of the day, we want to figure out how can we improve our quality of life. And there's a lot of misnomers, right? We, we have the, the internet now, so a lot of things can be uh, Googled um, search, but, but, but I'm, I believe, I'm a true believer that it takes, when you specialize in something, it's entirely different than if you're just, just doing a quick Google search. And because of the, you know, there's things that you know that the average individual just doesn't know at all. So what are you, you know, what are you looking at? What do, what do, these, what do these words mean, right? Um, and so we wanted to just bring experts like yourself onto the platform to speak to uh, a lot of uh, current health issues, problems that we're having as it pertains to hair, skin, uh, and the beard. So with that said, I'd like to introduce Dr. Tiffany Clay to the platform. Now, just to kind of give a little bit of background for everyone, and we're streaming, we're streaming on Facebook, we're streaming on YouTube, and, um, and we're also streaming on IG here. For everybody who may not know who Dr. Tiffany Clay is, Dr. C Tiffany Clay, in short, uh, she's from Atlanta, right? Born and raised. And uh, you attended HBCU, Dillard University. You went to uh, got your med medical education from, and please help me if I, if I butcher this name. Meharry. Meharry Medical College. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you also completed your dermatology resi resi residency uh, at uh, St. Louis University, which is pretty not not too far from where I uh, I grew up in terms of I grew up in Indiana, so it's still in that Midwest region. Um, so again, I want to say thank you for coming onto the platform. I'm super super honored for you just just sharing your time with us. Uh, but I I would before we go into uh, our topic today, I want to get everybody familiar with you. Uh, on a on a deeper level, and one of the stories that resonated with me as I was kind of, uh, you know, seeing who you know, what's your background, what you know, what, what you know, who who you were, and mm -hmm. I was doing some of my research, and you shared a powerful story, and if you don't mind sharing this story, that would be great because I know there's somebody out there that uh, would need to hear this story. Mm -hmm. You being a graduate, the first graduating class out of Dillard University after post Katrina, uh, I couldn't imagine. I remember I was in school at that time uh, when, um, when that happened. Uh, so I couldn't imagine what the experience was like if you just didn't know if you were going to graduate, you know, uh, you've, you've worked your, you know, you've, you've worked all the way up to this moment in time and all of a sudden something like that catastrophic happens. Um, can you kind of walk us through that process and um, and kind of like what was your experience like? Yeah, um, so that was my senior year. Dillard is obviously in New Orleans. Um, and I remember taking my MCAT, which is the, the big entrance exam for um, medical school. And um, I had just taken the test, school started, and it may have been two or three weeks into my senior year that they're like, oh, this big storm is coming. And, you know, if you go to school in that region, you're used to like, you know, taking a little road trip to your friend's college or maybe even staying the toughest storm out. So the fact that I actually had to leave, I was just like, okay, take a quick trip to Houston and um, realized that I was not going back to New Orleans for a very long time after mm -hmm. that. Um, so, you know, this is before Facebook and Instagram and everything where you can find everyone. So I was, you know, pretty much at home um, for that fall semester and I couldn't find any of my professors. There wasn't a lot of information um, being distributed 
And so I thought that that was it. I was like, okay, this is, you know, the end of the senior year, but I won't graduate on time or I won't graduate this year. So um, I actually found out later that fall or into winter that they were actually going to open my college back up mm. and that I would be able to graduate on time ish, on time ish. Um, so we went back and New Orleans was still destroyed and, um, you couldn't find like room and board. So we actually made our campus in the Hilton downtown. And so we, we called it, uh, hit the Hillard. <laughs> so the Hilton and Dillard. And, um, <laughs> that was the dormitory. That's where our professors stayed. You know, some of them stayed on the same, um, on the same floors in hotel rooms. The, um, the conference rooms, that's where we went and had our classes. So it was extremely different. And I actually didn't graduate on time. Most colleges graduate in May. Um, that year I graduated in close to July. So at the very end of uh, June. So still derailed most of my plans. I couldn't enter medical school because um, I couldn't complete my applications that year. But, you know, it was definitely another circumstance that was completely out of my hands. So just like, you know, the graduates this year, I, I made that post because I, um, I had a patient that I saw last week that was a college senior. And we just started talking about, you know, her experiences and, and everything being unknown about what her future holds. And I told her, I was like, it's going to be fine. You know, it's tough. It's totally out of your hands. You have no control over this. Um, you still have your classmates. She still was able to, to know that she would graduate on time, but wouldn't have an actual graduation ceremony. But you know, the future was still bright and she still had the opportunity to go out and, and reach her goals and go to, you know, uh, graduate school or, or work, whatever her, her next step was. So it's all good, graduates. Okay, yeah. okay. I'm glad that you, when I read that post, I was like, wow, this is a phenomenal story. Uh, and it gave a lot of hope to someone. I can only imagine this is the uncertainty, right? You done built yourself up until this moment. You have like literally you know, you're thinking about, you already have plans in your mind. Like you said, you had plans. What was the next best steps for you? Uh, you know, you, the excitement, you, you visualized everyone coming to your graduation and then boom, that happens. And that kind of, uh, it can kind of throw a wrench, if you will, into uh, your whole world at that particular time. So yeah. I was, that, that story really, really resonated. I thought that was really a great story because I know that it would resonate with a lot of people who are going through that at this particular time. Well, um, to uh, get into kind of the meat and potatoes in, in terms of what we want to discuss, uh, as you, you, you shared, you've shared this, and, and I know there's a lot of people who, who understand this, and you understand this a, a lot more than most, because you're in the medical field every single day. And one of the things is that there's huge disparities when it comes to the health in the Black community. Right, we see it, we lived it, we, we have aunties, uncles, we have, you know, we, we know from just experience what's really going on and the disparities that are causing us to, to that's causing us to stay in this, this cycle of not being able to make sure that uh, the quality of our life is, 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 is in order, the way that we would hope for it to be. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, one of the things that I know that is lacking is education. You know, uh, education, I'm a huge proponent of education. I, I love to, to share and that's at the heart of everything that I do because I understand the power that education has uh, and that can give to an individual once they're able to apply it. Uh, and so two topics that I wanted to wanted us to cover today, uh, one being, and help me with this, with this uh, this pronunciation, but it's acne, colitis, new type? Keloid, keloid, acne, keloidalis, nuke, also known as folliculitis. That must be <laughs> Latin. Dallas. That must be Latin, because I know I didn't pass Latin in high school. I'm going to tell you that right now. You can call it AKN, AKN. AKN. Okay, I can go with AKN, you know what I'm saying? Give, give me something to work with. I was like, why they put that word there? <laughs> so, all right. And then the other one is uh, Tine Barbe. Yeah. Tine or Barbe. Tine. You know, I, okay. How I knew it was Barbe because I had went to South, I had went to Columbia, and then they were like, Barba, Barba. I was like, oh, this is what you talk about, my beard? I was like, oh, okay. 
So I got that one. That was for you. I got that one. Um, so I would like to get into uh, first the AKN, um, and I want to start off with with what exactly. What is it? Um, so it it goes by several names. Um, the the term acne keloidalis nuke. If you break it down. Um, it's kind of a misnomer, but it, it, it help, it's helpful to think about um, that definition, that uh, name of it and, and how it's defined. So mm -hmm. um, the acne part of it is that it looks like little pimples or um, small bumps. The keloidalis component of it is that it can sometimes cause little scars that look like small keloids. And if left long enough, it can cause really large keloids. I'm sure everyone's seen a man who has a lot of voice on the back of his scalp. Mm -hmm. um, and then the nuke, nuke means neck. So usually you see it, you know, on that back, um, back of lower part of the scalp or, you know, right where the scalp meets the neck. Um, oh. Another term for it is folliculitis keloidalis. And folliculitis is when you have inflammation around the hair follicles. So that can happen on the scalp. That can happen on the beard. Um, that can happen on the back. You know, if you've seen people with back uh, acne or backne. Um, so all of those are conditions where the hair follicles get a little irritated. Okay. So AKN is generally when we just see it on the back of the scalp, it starts off as typically it can start off as just really small breakouts, almost like little pimples, mm -hmm. um, which can then progress to scars. They can get pretty itchy. So by scratching them, you can allow a little infection in. So very commonly, um, we find secondary infections, like with bacteria such as staph. Mm -hmm. um, and if left long enough, you actually can end up losing a lot of hair in the area permanently. Um, mm -hmm. If the hair follicles damaged enough, and unfortunately for some people, if it's not, you know, checked early or checked, um, you know, before it gets severe, it can cause a lot of disfigurement. Okay. So you have folliculitis, and then there are different types of folliculitis under that tree. And folliculitis is inflammation in the follicle, mm -hmm. right? That's pretty much what yep. it is in a nutshell? Yeah. All right. And so, and you were just talking about some of the symptoms are like, it starts to itch, that sensation, uh, that itchiness. And then what would be some of the, what would, you, what would you say would be some of the causes to um, this acne on, this specifically on the back of, uh, you know, scalp. the scalp? It's, um, it's multifactorial. So there are several things, you know, if you look a textbook up or read some, uh, some special literature about it, some special research, it's going to, um, to tell you about several things, but it won't pinpoint one in particular. I'll tell you what they all are, and then I'll tell you what I think it really okay. is a problem. Um, one is, one theory is from friction. So, you know, if men are wearing tight hats, if, if a bigger guy has a, a wider neck, wider base of the scalp, and he's wearing, you know, really tight collared shirts, and that's putting pressure on. So pressure, friction um, is one theory. The other theory is, or mechanical, you know, by, uh, grooming techniques. So if you're shaving the hair really short or using certain clippers a certain type of way. And then the last is um, just the actual structure of the hair. So if you look at the type of men who typically get this, very rarely women will get it. It's like 20 times more common in men. Um, but if a man gets it, it's usually a man with skin of color who has curlier hair. So Sometimes you cut that hair down too short and when it's trying to grow back out through the surface of the skin, instead of it kind of making its way out, it's actually just hitting it, curling right back under. And then that creates a little inflammation under the skin and that can lead to it. So for me, I tend to lean more towards the latter as far as it being a process where um, the hair follicle is being inflamed because the hair is kind of growing back in and causing irritation. But so, it's, a def it's definitely a multifactorial. Condition. Multifactorial, and did you, did you mentioned bacteria? Was, did you mention the bacteria from the collar as well? No, oh. typically, um, if there's infection, I, I will say almost every man who I've 
who I, if it's the initial appointment, when I see it, I'll go ahead and um, do a swab to check for bacteria. And most times there's bacteria there, but it's usually because it's been manipulated. It's either been cut, the bumps that are there have been cut when they're sh shaving or getting a haircut. And so the open skin allows bacteria in, um, or they got itchy. And so, you know, you scratch it, fingernails are dirty, that lets bacteria in. So, mm. so that's, that makes it worse. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. That just sounds like that just made, this just made it worse. <laughs> Just a, a an open wound, and you just go ahead and say, "Let me throw some dirt back there. Maybe that's gonna work." You know, <laughs> not, good, not, not, good. <laughs> not good at all. So now, what are what are some um you know some treatments? Some is there you know what's some over counter over the counter treatments? Because right now everybody is pretty much we on lockdown um, due to this um, COVID nineteen um, pandemic. Mm -hmm. So some people, and then you know you're. The, the last thing you're thinking is an answer for, you know, what's going on, you know, this acne that's going on in the back of my, my scalp. And, you know, you're stressing, so you're definitely not thinking about any solutions. And you're frantic. It, I mean, there's so many scenarios I can only imagine that's going on in someone's house and what's going on in their mind considering what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. And um, do you think that that would also, could that, could that potentially add to um, the the AK AKN symptoms? Just the stress. I, yeah, stress can can be triggered. Um, you know, stress stress itself can trigger several dermatologic manifestations. So you know, some people get stressed and they can have a rash that breaks out, or they can have get stressed and have hives, or get stressed and their skin itches a little bit more than it should. So. Um, definitely, if someone has that and they're stressed or they're just sitting at their desk all day, I mean, yeah. you, you know, you have certain mannerisms that you probably do. You're like, I didn't, I didn't even realize I did that. Yeah. So they, they could just be sitting at home, popping those little bumps off the scalp and mm -hmm. <laughs> getting them infected. Man, and you know, there's people that love doing that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know you, I, know you <laughs> I, I don't know if there's a name for that, but I, you know, I know people, they just love sitting at, like, they just, I'm like, no, nah, I'm cool. I'm I, that's just not my thing, but, uh, but I can see how just you just doing that. You don't, unbeknownst to you, you don't even know that you're doing it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but what would be some, you know, what would be some over the counter treatments that has have, that people have used, right, in order to uh, help with this particular, um, you know, scalp disorder, if you will, or skin disorder? Probably nothing, to be honest. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's, um, I always tell people if, if it works, if it's over the counter and it works, I don't know that it's worked that well, because I always see the people who try stuff over the counter and it didn't work. Got it. Um, now in a situation, you know, like we're in now, definitely, um, if, if someone suspects that they have it, myself and a ton of my derm friends across the country are seeing patients via online visit. So just like you and I are talking, we're doing appointments like this. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. But um, if that's, you know, that's not in your means right now, you can't do that to at least minimize the risk of infection. I would say try not to scratch. Um, if it is itching, you know, it's, it's okay to, to try an over-the-counter itch cream, um, anti-itch cream, like just a, a little hydrocortisone. Um, and you can also try to minimize infection by um, keeping your hands off of your scalp, but also using just an over-the-counter shampoo that um, either something that helps dandruff specifically or that helps fungus specifically because of those are going to have, those types of shampoos are going to have a little medicine in them that will um, work as an antibiotic. Okay. So in the short term, you'll, you'll have a couple of options like that. Okay. Now, okay, I'm, I, listen, I'm about, to come, I'm about to go see Dr. Clay. I just saw her on a live. You know, she's doing um, virtual calls, correct? Mm -hmm. I'm, about to, I'm about to call her because I got a problem. I need to get, I need to figure this out. This enough is enough. What would that look like? Would that, is that me taking a picture on the back and then send it, sending that to you? And then from there, you're able to assess, okay, what we, what direction we need to go? Because mm -hmm. that's, because um, again, for somebody who just, they don't, one, they've never been, you know this from your practice, right? How yes. many men do you see versus women coming into your, your practice? Yeah, it's, it's definitely more more um, more women. And then if it is a man, usually his wife 
sent him or his girlfriend sent him. Right. So but, I, so but I, I don't want to be make... bashful about going to the doctor, you know, mm -hmm. because a lot of times if, if this condition is left unchecked and you're like, mm -hmm, it's just a couple months. And then a year later, you're like, OK, it's double or mm -hmm, now my hair is falling out. Yeah. You have waited way too long. So mm -hmm. if you even think that you feel a spot, you know, yesterday is the day that you should have made that appointment um, for the online appointments that I, I do. Um, for most things, I'm able to do a little something or at least get something started until I'm back in the office in person. Mm -hmm. um, so usually what I like to do is definitely get a still photo so that I can have something that's nice and focused. Hopefully that it has excellent lighting and from a few different angles, closer up and farther um, away. Mm -hmm. And I actually will look at those uh, a few minutes before the appointment. And then in the appointment, I actually call the patient and we're on a video chat just like this. And we go over, you know, their symptoms. We go over if they've tried anything previously. Um, if they have someone who can help them with the camera, um, and if it, you know, the Wi-Fi is good, then um, I can actually look at it in the video as well and, and try to at least get something started. Some treatments we like to do in the office, but we definitely can get something started uh, virtually. So, so one of the guys. So one of the things I'm, as you're talking, in my mind, I start thinking about uh, clippers, right? And I'm like, all right, you know, you get the, once we get, we get the taper, we get the fade, we get so many things. And I know sometimes the clippers can get pretty, it can get pretty hot mm -hmm. back there. Uh, you know, how, and, and I guess would, that would add to the causation in terms of the irritation part, the inflammation. Of it, it could, yep. And, and so when you're, when you're having that conversation with, this individual, this guy who's just coming to you, trying to figure out his his life or you know what's going on with the the, the back of his his scalp. Uh, what should he? What should he be? You know, how do you how do you calm or bring a sense of just hey everything is going to be okay? I got you <laughs> because that uh -huh. like how do you go about like how do you go about that? Because there's a, there's some anxiety, right? I mean, for some Definitely. people, there can be a little bit of anxiety, uh, even if it's just like, hey, I'm going to get this this check. For somebody, that could just be, you know, you never know what's going through a person's mind, right? Mm -hmm. um, but how do how can we begin to start to get more men to come to go see their dermatologist right away if, if something, you know, they start to feel something or see something on their skin? Um, I think just... I think number one, increasing access to dermatologists and, and, and making pe people aware of what a dermatologist is, what a dermatologist does, um, and making people aware that if they want to find a doctor that looks like them, that myself or other dermatologists, we will do our best to try to find a dermatologist that's, you know, at least in your state, might not be super close to where you live, but um, I get DMs all the time about people asking me, you know, is there a dermatologist in Ohio or wherever else they are? So, you know, and I think that educating um, non-skin of color dermatologists and making sure that they have awareness in these um, conditions that are, you know, common in skin of color and that so that they can treat those patients if they're in a, in a community or a town where, you know, they're the only one so that they're able to, to take care of people appropriately. Um, so that's one, just making sure that they have access and, you know, you just have to like your doctor. Some people don't, don't, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. That's fine. I'm in Atlanta where there are, gosh, there's so many black dermatologists here, but for me, I, I really try to be as down to earth as possible. You know, I try to not just, you know, throw your meds at you and walk out. I really try to explain what the condition is, why the condition is there you know, make sure that you have some understanding of why it's happening because people come back for your follow-up and it can still be there and you're like, oh, I didn't even know I was supposed to do this, this, and this. Um, so it's, it's definitely about hopefully finding a doctor that you like, <laughs> maybe finding, a, 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 you know, a, a doctor who looks like you if that's what you want and, um, and just being educated and not afraid to ask questions if you don't understand something. Got it, got it. Now, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Dr. Clay, the my my I have another. Um, what what I want to do is we're gonna move into the next topic, and then mm -hmm. once we finish with that topic, then I want to get to the questions. Is that okay? okay. Yeah. Awesome. So the next topic uh, is talking about the uh, teeny teeny 
Tinia. It's called what? Tinny of Barbe. Tinny Barbe. Uh, and I didn't know, I, I didn't have, obviously, I'm, I'm learning just as much as everyone else, mm-hmm. and, which I love to be in that position. And uh, can you kind of explain what is Tinny Barbe for everyone and myself? Yep. Um, so it's, an, you know, every, almost every dermatology term is kind of a descriptor. So Tinea is our word that we use for yeast or fungus. So mm-hmm. if you have ringworm on your body, it's called Tinea corporis because a corporis is like your body. Or if you have um, Tinea capitis, it's a cap. So it's ringworm on the scalp. Mm. So Tinea barbae is ringworm or a fungal infection that affects the beard and mustache area. Oh, wow. It's a ringworm on the beard? Yeah. In the scalp? Wow. Didn't, I didn't Not know. Nice. <laughs> you can still catch ringworm? Yeah. So on the beard, um, it, it tends to be caused by the type. So, you know, fungus can be anywhere. Fungus can be passed from, you know, if you're a teacher, kids got ringworm, they can pass it to you. Um, certain animals can also spread ringworm. So um, cats and dogs have a common type that they can spread to human skin. Wow. And um, tinea barbae, thankfully, is caused by um, usually like livestock animals. So it's typically more common in farmers or mm-hmm. I guess people who like to go to petting zoos or something. Okay. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> usually it comes from um, fungus that's from, um, that's from cows and uh, horses. Really? So yeah. how, how would you... So how would you go about treating someone who came in and said, hey, I got Tinea Barbe? They probably wouldn't know they had it. So um, it, it presents in several different ways. Um, it could cause like a cluster of, of pimples that look like pus bumps. Mm-hmm. It could cause like really big nodules and cysts or what, what somebody would call like a boil on the face. Mm-hmm. Um, it could present where it looks like just a little dandruff but the hair is coming out, you know, you're losing a little beard hair. Right. Um, so it presents in many different ways. So I would definitely test for the fungus first. And, um, and usually we like to be more aggressive. It can go into the beard hair a lot more often than not. So um, you would leave with an oral antifungal medication. Now there's a lot of guys who are getting, uh, I don't know if these are ingrown cysts or if it is, considered beard acne Mm -hmm. and the you know you have the ingrown hair you can some some you can see the ingrown hair as it 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 grows right back into the skin the follicle right but then you have it where you just have this um this bump in in a sense that the guys are feeling but they don't see any pus they don't see any hair uh it's just the follicle itself is inflamed what what would what's that how would what would you consider that Probably a cyst. So um, cysts can develop anywhere that you have hair. So they're really common on the scalp. They can be on the face. They like the the trunk, the chest, the back area. Um, and cysts, we don't really understand exactly why they form or how they form, but it's just like a little cavity. If you think of it as a as a whitehead, it's a really really large version of a whitehead. Um, the only way to truly get rid of it from under the skin is to have a surgery to remove it and then be sure that all of the contents are taken out. Usually that's followed by some stitches. Um, The one thing that you should not do at home is try to pop that cyst. Why not? For several reasons. (laughs) Number one, um, you could cause a really serious infection, especially if you're trying to pop a cyst on the face. A lot of the veins on the face drain into your brain. So mm. if you pop something and then you get some bad bacteria there, you have serious problems. Um, but the other reason that is way more common, so I don't mean to scare everybody, um, is if you try to squeeze a cyst, the, the contents don't always go out. They sometimes go under. Okay. And if they go under, your skin is going to try <laughs> to wall it off. But it, before it does that, it's going to be red. It's going to be painful. It might cause an infection, and it's going to get it's going to become huge. It'll be swollen, and then you'll really need medical attention. Wow! And so, in 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 the same token, you don't recommend someone trying to pull out a hair from the follicle. If they can see, if they can see the hair kind of on the surface, you know, definitely clean your tweezers, clean your skin, 
and try to try to remove it only if you can see it but i wouldn't go hunting for it i've seen people who went fishing for it and there was no there's no hair in there <laughs> it's just a cyst so would you would you would you recommend if they do tweet they pull it out of the follicle the hair out of the follicle or would you just say hey loosen it up and then come and see you yeah usually if, if there's a, a hair that's curled under you can kind of see it from the surface and if you pull it it'll kind of just like weasel itself out and it's probably still attached and you can leave it and just you know clip it Trim it. yeah because it'll be way longer than the rest of the hair because i get a lot of guys they'd be like hey man i i I pulled my hair out, like literally like yanked it out of the follicle itself. They're like, well, man, my, my hair's not growing in that spot anymore. Uh, it sounds like you did some damage. <laughs> it sounds like, sound like you did Bingo. more damage than good. That's what, you know, it's like somebody went to go fix, hey man, I went to go fix, fix my sink. But yep. you know what I mean? My sink's not working no more. I'm like, yeah, did you think about calling a plumber? <laughs> yeah, you need help. Yeah, you need help. No, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let's go ahead and, and get into some some questions real quick. I'm glad that you made that uh, you 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 shared that because a lot of guys are actually going in themselves, and I'm sure you you are fully aware of this. And they're just yanking the hair out of their follicle, and they're like, "Why am I? Why is my hair not growing back? Yeah, why is the hair not growing back? If it's if you have a lot of inflammation, just like what I talked about with the the scalp, if you damage a follicle or if a follicle has ruptured, it's just going to produce scar tissue on top. So the follicle uh -huh. is that's it. You you destroyed it. And is that it also can cause dark spots too? So you see a lot of men with like a lot of dark spots on the beard who are tweezing the hair a lot. Um, that can cause inflammation, which then causes the dark spot. Would that also um, would that be the same like? If a person, if they're trying to do the back of the neck, that can also cause uh, scar tissue too? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And that won't, it won't. And it's just, the follicle is done. It's it's out of operation. There's no coming back from that. Finito. That's it. That's it. You sure? All right. All right, guys. It ain't no yeah. hope. Once you if go, it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone, it's gone. So the most important thing out of this, I would just go see a dermatologist before you try to be, you know, be, you try to take Dr. Tiffany Clay job. You ain't going to be able to do it. Okay, <laughs> you try, but you might, you might be, you, you might end up making it worse yeah. uh, for yourself. So I just want to let all the guys know, because sometimes we would go, we would go there. Yeah, this I is told the, the, I told the one the time it's okay to ask for help. Yeah, I told somebody, I said, we don't go to the doctor until our foot is falling off. We're like, oh, what, man, you don't go to the doctor, something wrong with your foot. Man, it's just fungus. Man, <laughs> it's like, what happened to that fungus? I was like, man, I got my foot hanging, I got to go to the doctor. Yes. It's just like, no, like go to the doctor when you have fungus or at least a, you know that if something is different with your body part that it was different than what it, what it looked like two years ago. Exactly. Right? And it's not a waste of time. I think sometimes people come in and they're like, I'm wasting your time with this one bump. And I'm like, no, I'd rather you come when there's one versus, you know, dozens. Absolutely. So I want to get into uh, some questions real quick, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is some that we got on our, our IG. And this question is from uh, Champy underscore Kilo. So forgive the word, the names, because you know, it can get a little weird with, yeah. the, <laughs> with some of the names. I'd be like, where do you get that name from? But anyways, um, the first question is, uh, actually, that's not. So this is from actually Mo Beta 504. We do have ladies too that, that's on the show as well. So they. They got questions. Ingrown facial hair on on African American women. How to prevent it, and what causes this, these ingrown hairs? Facial. Ingrown hairs and and what? what was she question? said she has. She says that uh, ingrown facial hairs on African American women. Okay. Um, How to prevent it, and what causes what causes it? Um. So. Several factors can cause um, women to have facial hair growth, which is called hirsutism, um, which is a condition where a woman has male type or male patterns of hair growth. So chin, beard, chest, mm -hmm. uh, happy trail, more than, more than you know, we, we deem normal. It can happen from um, increased levels of hormones. So if a woman feels like she's having excessive um, amounts of hair growth in certain areas not just your you know your few little whiskers it could be due to a, a hormonal imbalance so maybe a good time to go see 
um, their GYN, a gynecologist, or um, talk to an endocrinologist, especially if they're having other issues like with abnormal periods and stuff. Um, if women, um, some women who take certain medications, it can increase um, the and men and women, for example, um, there's a certain medication called cyclosporin um, that can cause excessive hair growth. And as women age, just like with men, you know, hair leaves certain areas and, and moves and grows in, in other places, that can happen in women too um, from a, a hormonal uh, changes that happen. So several factors can cause it. Now, um, how to prevent it? Um, gosh, there are a few options. I would say the gold standard is, number one, make sure your hormones are okay. Because no matter what we do, if the hormones are taking over, it's going to keep going back. Mm -hmm. But um, gold standard is, is laser hair removal. Okay. So there are some, there are, are a few lasers that are out now for brown skin or skin of color that are safe, that are effective. Um, and, you know, each treatment, you should notice that you're having less and less hair growth and that the hair follicles are, are thinner. Um, there is a topical prescription medication that can be used to minimize the hair growth, but it's a, it's a use it or lose it thing. So you have to use it or the effect will go away if you stop it. And, um, and there's an oral medication that helps to balance your hormones that dermatologists prescribe quite often that helps to minimize the hair growth a little bit, but you, you definitely want to do that along with the topical product or with the laser hair removal. Um, those are just going to be your, your best bets to minimize it. Okay. All right. Awesome. Awesome. And you can always go see Dr. Tiffany Clay. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you, while you're here, you might as well go make appointments. Uh, next question is, uh, how can, so this gentleman here, he has a daughter and his daughter, uh, this is, uh, has his, he goes by underscore TGW5. And um, his daughter has eczema mm -hmm. and he feels like nothing seems to work with her eczema at this particular time. How could he, uh, I guess he wants to know, how can he better assist his daughter, um, you know, due to the fact that, they, you know, they're just trying to figure out how to, how to manage it. She needs dermatologists. <laughs> dermatologist. oh, I hate to say that. You, you need um, but in the meantime, um, you know, Definitely something that's really confusing when you're buying products for someone um, or for yourself at the store is you, you go for stuff and you're like, oh, this is this brand. They make sensitive stuff. Mm -hmm. The key word that I say when you have really sensitive skin or when you have eczema, you want to avoid fragrance. But there's, mm -hmm. there's two things you'll see. You'll see fragrance free and you will see unscented. Unscented products have a fragrance that's an unscented fragrance. <laughs> so <laughs> confusing, right? So fragrance free is completely no fragrance, no nothing. But unscented products have what's called a masking fragrance. So it's it's a fragrance that's actually made to just cover up the weird smells of the other stuff in the product. So number one, you want to look for something that is fragrance free. That's your keyword. Um, for someone with eczema, you know keeping the skin as moisturized, as hydrated as possible. Um, if that means putting on moisturizers or creams or, or petroleum jelly twice a day, do it. And then otherwise, you know, if the pediatrician is not available or, or the measures that you're doing with the pediatrician aren't helpful, then it's going to be time to see a dermatologist. Um, that is our expertise. That's our bread and butter. And um, thankfully, we now have new medications that are topical and new medications that are systemic that I have patients who have were covered in head to toe eczema who have nothing on their skin anymore. So it's definitely, we're advancing in, in eczema treatments, thankfully. Awesome. Awesome. And I get it. Cause when I was a kid, I had eczema and I would get hives a lot. Oh, and wow. you know, my mom never took me to the dermatologist. Hi wow. mom, if you're watching, but she was like, take that bit of drill and go back to bed. So wow. I get it, but you know, if 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 it's really and mine was very mild, but if it's if it's causing you know um, mental anguish or it's causing you know um, bullying and things like that, please please bring that child to the doctor. Absolutely, I appreciate that definitely. Uh, my my um my my best friend, he his daughter, they're managing that process. I remember when he 
you know, when that when it first happened, he was like, he was just like in total shock. What do I do? What's the like he, you know, when you again, when you're in a space where you're just trying to figure it out, but because you're so it's the stress and the anxiety of what's going on can get the best of you, you're not thinking. Like you're not thinking right. You don't got your thinking cap in. No. Uh, so um, make sure you guys go see uh, your, your 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 dermatologist, and then I'm, I'm sure that uh, you're in Atlanta, and it, it doesn't matter where they are in the world if they wanted to do a virtual call with you. Is that okay? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. Because we 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 have people all over the world. We from from Kenya, from LA to New York to Houston, I mean, when I say all over the world, people who follow our platform, I mean all over the world. So that's amazing. we're, we're awesome. super connected, so you never know, you never know. All right. Okay, next question is, this question is from um, I Am Mellow Tokyo, right? And he's a friend of the show. And his question is, he's been wearing a bald, ha- so this is a, a hair loss question. He's been, uh, is, this, is, that, is that okay? Sure. Okay, cool. He, he, he says he's been wearing a bald head for 10 plus years. Is it even possible to get your hair fully back after being bald for 10 plus years? Uh, if he has, it, it really depends. It depends on the type of hair loss. So if he had like George Jefferson kind of hair pattern, uh, hair loss, which is like your classic male pattern hair loss, um, if he has follicles that are salvageable, he could have um, transplant, hair transplant done, which I do not do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's, um, there's a great treatment out that's available called PRP, which is platelet rich plasma. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. great for, um, for hair loss. You could, you know, take oral medications or use topical medications um, that would kind of change your, your hormonal, um, would change your testosterone to help enhance hair growth as well. But that doesn't come without side effects sometimes. So um, it really just depends on what, what initial or what organic type of hair loss he, uh, he has or he has. Got it. So that would be, ba- he has to go see someone and then from there you're able to diagnose, okay, which direction we need to go. Is this permanent or is this something that we you can recover from with whatever treatments that you guys exactly. are together. Well, why Perfect. would you go back if you've been bald for 10 years? I'm sure you got a nice head. <laughs> I mean, you know, some people, you know, they, hey, uh, this, <laughs> you know what, a lot of guys, right, a lot of guys, when you go into, and you know that you, you, you're, you're fully aware of this, is that um, there's a lot of misnomers, and as as we advance, right, when we, ha- we get more information, and, you know, you it, like you guys, you see technology has 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 really been able to evolve you know, your field, right? And a lot of guys, you know, they they like, oh, well, because my 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 dad was bald and I'm gonna be bald and, mm-hmm. and 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 I'm a victim of my biology, but we already know that you don't have to be a victim of your biology with all the, the new technology and information that we know about the human biology. Mm-hmm. And a lot of guys, especially in our in the black community, we have no idea about we just kind of just we just say okay well my dad was bald and that's what it is but we don't know it can be due to your diet right you can turn on turn off genes like or you know epigenetics or it can be stress related or it can be you know i mean like there's a litany of of different triggers and we don't know we just be like all right man it is what it is and yeah like okay i'm gonna just go ahead and shave exactly but then once once we get a glimmer of hope and somebody's here to say hey that's not the case like it's we're not victims. Everybody's situation is going to be different. It's going to be unique. But it's best to go see your dermatologist. And go, it's best to go see someone so that way you can, to your point you had mentioned earlier, get in front of it as early as possible um, with any ish, health issue. Uh, so, that, so that's something that a lot of guys in our community, they just don't know. They have no idea. And, and when you don't know, um, then you find yourself you know, down the road they're like, oh, wow, I could have went to my dermatologist and got this check. I didn't even know. Or they didn't even know you can go to a dermatologist and talk about these type of like hair loss mm-hmm. or, you know, just certain things. You, what you don't know is what you don't know. So That's I'm true. glad that you're, so, you're here on the show because now they know. Now they know. And now they know somebody they can go talk to. 
Uh, last question, and, and then we can uh, start to close out, is uh, this question comes from, uh, from uh, Teresa Wellness. And Teresa says, sudden eye bags and bad skin at 27. What to do if you don't want to get dermal fillers or filler? She said filler. Mm, eye bags and what was the other thing? Sudden eye bags and bad skin. I don't know what that means. Uh, uh, I'm seconds. not sure. Um, so for for you know lower eyelid bags, so that has so many factors too. Everything has a lot of factors, right? Uh -huh. um, so um, being tired or fatigued, if you have allergies, um, genetics. So many things can lead to that. It's actually very common. Um, outside of dermal fillers and surgery, um, most of your efforts are just going to be camouflaging. If, if they're very severe, um, under eye um, bags or troughs or, or, or any issue that you're having there, mm -hmm. um, your best efforts and your best eye creams, once it's already there, are really not going to reverse that. Um, bad skin i don't know what that means yeah i know that's kind of vague yeah. um uh go see a dermatologist yeah go see a dermatologist. <laughs> like, to get more because that is that that is vague that is, that that is vague yeah. last question last question um what's the best way to lessen the flakes with uh 0.1 percent tretinian or tre tretinoin what is it tretinoin yes tretinoin yes what is the best way to reduce Flakes? Le to lessen the flakes with 0.1% trentinoin. That is a very specific question. Okay. Yeah, that's super specific. Um, so tretinoin is a topical cream that's used predominantly for acne. Okay. It also helps to minimize dark spots on the skin that come up from acne or from other, other um, factors, but usually dark spots from acne. Mm -hmm. And it, um, it also is an anti-aging medication technically so oh. it works by unclogging your pores preventing pimples and it tells your skin to stop over making melanin mm -hmm. it also helps you make uh, additional collagen so if you use it for year after year after year i'm in my mid to late 30s i've been using it since i was a teenager for acne and so it helps my skin just stay healthy even if i don't really have that much acne anymore so tretinoin um, is AKA Retin-A or a retinol, which is a vitamin A derived topical. Um, it tends to make people very dry when they first start using it. But after usually several weeks to um, a month or two of using it, usually your skin will be able to tolerate it pretty well, but otherwise it'll make you kind of ashy. Like you'll wake up and you'll have like dry patches or like a little, a, for me, I call it my white beard. It looks like white all around here. Mm -hmm. So the best way to minimize that is to use lots of hydrating factors and um, emollients or moisturizers. So um, morning and evening, you probably should be using um, a hydrator that has hyaluronic acid in it and then putting on top of that a moisturizing cream um, and if that is not helping, then it might just be too strong for you. So you might need to go down to a weaker dosage. Got it. Got it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I definitely appreciate that uh, for answering those questions. I love Q&As. That's, that's my favorite part of the show. Uh, that's what I love to do. And um, for everyone who needs to, you know, they're trying to want, they're figuring out or wondering right now, okay, where can they find Dr. Tiffany Clay? You know where where can they find you and um, how can they you know how can they get access to you um so i am in private practice at dermatology affiliates in atlanta um you can go to the website www.dermatologyaffiliates.com and um from there there's a link that says message me if you want to click message me it uses a platform called clara or you can contact the office and make an appointment that way. That is the best way to make an appointment right now because everyone is trying to call the office. Um, if you still would like to call, the number is 404-816-7900. Um, that phone number is linked into the contact button on my Instagram, which is at Clay. 
at D-E-R-M-D-R-E-L-A-Y. Um, please do not DM me your medical questions. I am not legally covered to do so on that platform, but I can help you in an appointment. <laughs> and we'll make sure that we have all Dr. Tiffany's Clay information in the description. So if you guys need, you know, in terms of getting that, getting access, access to her, if it's going to her uh, IG, um, or, you know, if they can get a direct link to you, we'll definitely put that in, in the description with your phone number, and then they can just contact you directly and make an appointment uh, sooner than later. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, Dr. Tiffany Clay, I, I, again, I appreciate you for just taking the time out of your day. You could be doing anything else, <laughs> but you're here <laughs> on the Grooming Den Show. Uh, and I'm, I'm grateful for that uh, because I want to continue with this conversation. I definitely want to have you back on the show uh, and, and because there's so much more uh, awareness that we can build around um, health, especially when, it's, when we talk about it in our community and just make people more comfortable and understanding what's, you know, hey, what's going on? How does this work? Uh, what's behind the veil? <laughs> you, know, like, you know, as you can see, she, Dr. Tiffany Clay's not gonna hurt anybody. Uh, super friendly and you're here to just help in as many people as possible and improve the quality of life and I want to make sure that people are aware uh, what what these individuals look like what they sound like you know um, and how they can get in contact with because uh, like I said I, I it's so many men that that I, I ask I say hey have you gone to talk to your dermatologist or have you seen your dermatologist some of them be like man what is that you know, I've never heard of that. Or if they have, you know, in their mind, they're thinking like, eh, I'm not too sure about going to see a dermatologist because that's not normal, right? Right. So if we can normalize not only just the conversation, but if we can normalize the fact that, you know, going to see your dermatologist is actually something healthy, how often should they, if they just want to go do like a regular check, maybe it's not, they're going, they're not coming there for a reason per se. If they just want to do a regular checkup, what would you advise somebody in terms of how often throughout the year should they do a regular checkup with, the, with their dermatologist? Um, if it's just a regular checkup for, you know, um, either a product consultation, um, I have patients who come in and they want all of their moles checked, for example, they'll come in and get checked literally head to toe. Um, Typically for those type of appointments, you know, once to twice a year, just depending on certain circumstances, if we're, you know, dealing with alopecia or, or tinea of some sort or, or other, um, you know, direct concerns or focused issues, then usually I will see patients every six to eight weeks or so until things clear up and then kind of set you free. Awesome. 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 Well, there you have it. Um, we will definitely have this, uh, this, this video, we can send it over to you as well. Um, we will chop it up and create some micros and stuff out, uh, out of it. We can send that over to you as well and that you can um, you know, put on your platform and share it with your community uh, of, of people that you know and things of that nature. And if there's anyone that you feel like I need to know to bring them on the platform, please let me know because I want to get as many um, uh, people in the field of dermatology or just in the, the field of health and improving the quality uh, uh, the, 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 the quality of our life. And if there's anybody that you, you know, please let me know. And I definitely like to reach out to them and bring them okay. on the show. Got some people in mind. Well, thank you so much for having me. I had a good time. Thank you so Eddie. much. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And again, thank you for all the work and, uh, and all the, and all the dedication that you've done and sacrifices you've made to, to improve the quality of our life. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye.